not like most people out there, I'm a huge superhero movie fan. And obviously, as my shirt would indicate, I'm a huge horror movie fan. So the idea of kind of melding these two genres together um, is very intriguing. I was very excited about that. But it all comes down to the execution. Uh, great ideas on paper doesn't equal great ideas on film. So that being said, was this executed the right way? Let's talk about it. And with that, I'm welcome to another episode of The Real Mentor. My goal, as always, is to enhance your movie watching experience. So Brightburn, this is one produced by James Gunn, of course, from Guardians of the Galaxy fame here. Now, for those who are unfamiliar with what this movie is about, basically, this is, in essence, a kind of origin of a, a Superman-like character thrown into a horror slasher-type movie. Now, we have these two parents, one played by Elizabeth Banks, who's actually very good in the movie. And, you know, they, they can't conceive a child. And one day the answer comes in from the sky. You know, there's this meteor or spaceship that falls near the house. They discover a baby inside and decide to adopt it and raise it uh, as their own. Years later, the kid finds out he's got these super abilities. And, but unfortunately, unlike Superman, he uses those abilities for evil as opposed to good. And it kind of, the movie kind of takes off from there. As much as about what I say about the premise. Um, now, I got to say, I was very surprised that I was actually... Hoping to, this will be well executed, and it was. This gave us a good, interesting idea and explored it very well. But more importantly, as a horror film, it just needs to be scary, and it succeeds in that fashion as well. And that's what I mean about the execution, because they could have easily gone over the top of this. I mean, you have someone who's pretty much invincible, like can fly, super speed, lasers, etc. They pretty much do anything. They can't be stopped, and they could have really gone over the top. They can literally take any person and rip them limb from limb if they wanted to. I know this movie is very graphic in a good way. It's not over the top. They still maintain the horror vibe and the slasher kind of movie that we're used to seeing, unless some of these other gentlemen on this fine T-shirt, where you know he's stalking his prey, you know, kind of scaring him. You know, he's not really going after him full force. He's kind of maybe almost toying with him, if you will, as he's kind of learning how to use his powers. And that's fascinating because ideally the idea of a superhero that's able to do that, who's essentially a bad guy, is scary in itself. And the movie really does a good job of playing on that because, you know, we've seen super villains before. We've seen them in, in dozens of superhero movies. But the difference is between that movie and those movies is that in the, in the comic book movie uh, genre, there's always someone to oppose him. You know, there's, there's a good guy, there's a superhero with equal powers and more powerful, if you will. Here, there's nothing that can oppose this kid. He can do whatever he wants and there's nothing anybody can do about it. And that's great. But like I said, they execute, executed to a point where it didn't get too big. It kept it very intimate. This kid is deliberately going after certain individuals for things that, that they've done to him or could potentially do to him and his family. And he's in his own way protecting himself, kind of, while he's still trying to maybe take over the world. Again, and that's the other thing. The, the, a lot of things aren't very clear in a good way. They don't over explain everything. We don't get montage scenes of, of this kid learning his powers and oh, he can fly now. Let me see how, how far I can fly, how fast I can go. They don't bother with that. He learns, he figures out what he's able to do and he goes out there and takes care of business in a, in a bad way. And essentially you also don't get much you know, exposition as far as where he comes from, what he is. This, this is some kind of relationship between him and the ship that he landed on and the intentions that what, what Kind of what's, what's guiding him. They don't really go into or explore too much into that. And that's a good thing. They kind of kept that mystery, keeping it even scarier. Where essentially, this movie really works very, comes together very, very well. And in the end, I won't spoil anything because it's hard to, I don't want to say anything that might spoil it, but it ends in a way where I was very pleased. I walked out of thinking that's exactly how a movie like this with the anti hero should end. And it really, it, it tempts you with an ending which you may figure. Okay, this is where I figured this is where it's going to end, and then, but it, it doesn't do that, and I like that about it. And the end credits are really cool. Um, I, at the very beginning of the credits, I almost setting something up, which is just so appropriate in this age of superhero movies that we're in. Um, and I hope they don't really explore that. I kind of like this being a standalone movie. I'm afraid that they explore what they kind of set up in the end, or even go more into this character, this kid whose name is Brandon. I don't want to see him go into it because it may just get too much over the top at that point. It gave us just enough to give us an idea of what he's able to do while maintaining this horror movie vibe and not really going on to the superhero vibe, which I thought was very enjoyable. So at the end of the day, some way I think you guys can definitely enjoy it here. I really liked it. So I want to highly recommend you guys go watch. It's not going to be one of my favorite movies of the year. It's not the greatest thing I've ever seen, but it's a good change, a good change of pace in the summertime with all these big budget movies or animated movies. You get something. That's a little bit different here, and I think it's one you guys, I think, are going to enjoy. So, Brightburn, should you guys watch it? I think you should. Comment below, let me know what you guys thought. And, of course, if you haven't done so already, subscribe below and feed money to go to the movies and talk about it afterwards. See you guys next time.